Okay, so I spoke to myself for the last few minutes. Um, so I was just re recapping yesterday's uh, verse. Um, saying upon upon seeing the charming forms of the Lord, smiling and attractive, and hearing His very pleasing words, the pure devotee almost loses all other consciousness. His senses are freed from all other engagements, and he becomes absorbed in devotional service. Thus, in spite of his unwillingness, he attains liberation without separate endeavor. So we spoke about this liberation. Liberation is the stage of nishtha for devotees. Uh, right in nishtha is a stage where. A devotee becomes free from all karmic reactions, meaning he becomes free from all uh, karma phala, previous karma phala, completely gone. And also propensity to sin is gone at the stage of nishta. Hmm? So please remember this. Hmm. This is the Brahmabhuta stage. Brahmabhuta prasannatma. Devotee is happy. Um, no sochati, no kangshati. Does not hanker for anything. Does not lament for anything. Tamas Sarveshu Bhuteshu sees all living entities equally. Mad Bhaktim Labhate Param. Then he achieves pure devotional service to Krishna. Uh, so this is the uh, springboard uh, for uh, achieving Krishna Prema. Nishta is the springboard. Now before that everything is all uh, yeah, just fighting our anarthas. We have to keep fighting our anarthas. Mm. Not by our own, uh, just thinking that, you know, it's possible by our own endeavor. Putting our sincere endeavor because actually Krishna sees the sincere endeavor before he gives his mercy. It is It can be possible only by his mercy. But how sincerely, seriously we are trying um, uh, to overcome anarthas is what Krishna will see. And this is the stage of anartha nivruti. We are doing bhakti alongside. We should try to overcome our anarthas. Now, one of the fastest ways to overcome anarthas um, is absorption in devotional service. So this verse is saying how one can achieve that absorption. So simply by seeing the beautiful forms of the Lord, smiling and attracting, hearing his very pleasing words in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, pure devotee almost loses all other consciousness. So again, who is a pure devotee? Not the one who is already at the perfect stage. So there's a pure devotee and there's a perfect pure devotee. Uh, pure devotee is anybody who doesn't have any material desires from bhakti. His only intention is to please Krishna. So any person, in whatever stage of progress, advancement he is in, if he might be a neophyte pure devotee also. Uh, so he loses all other consciousness, meaning he is just attracted to the Lord because he is not attracted by anything else. He is simply attracted to the Lord. So he sees his form, he is very happy. Uh, he sees the smiling form of Krishna, attractive form of Krishna. He gets attracted by it. He hears Krishna's words in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. He gets attracted by it. And he, this is the impetus mm, to be absorbed in devotional service. So he senses, at least few of his senses, for example, you know, uh, eyes want to see only the beautiful forms of Krishna. Ears want to hear only uh, pleasing words of Krishna. Mm. So uh, tongue wants to only uh, accept Krishna Prasada. Now if uh, the senses become freed from all other engagements. Hmm. So, uh, how do we know if we are making progress? If the senses, if the engagement of the senses is becoming purer and purer, meaning the lesser and lesser our different senses are engaging in material things, uh, so much we have become pure. And when we become almost pure, almost pure, um, meaning maybe some incidental here and there, random uh, incidences of uh, you know, senses getting dragged. Uh, but that also, the devotee will fight back. Not just leave it or engage willingly in some kind of a sense enjoyment. So most of the senses and most of the activities of those senses are pure. Meaning they are afar, away from material engagements. And the devotee becomes absorbed in devotional service. Now, if we just become absorbed in devotional service, then automatically our senses become free from other engagements. <clears throat> this is the beauty of devotion. It's a very powerful process. And just by being absorbed in devotion service, we make progress. And unwillingly, it just comes. Liberation happens. Um, it's not like uh, it's a major... Uh, in one way, it's major, but devotee is not really focused on that. He's just absorbed in Krishna consciousness. is happy. Uh, then he achieves liberation as a side effect or intermediate uh, st st stage. Mm -hmm. 
so we have to we have to somehow become absorbed in krishna consciousness we have to do our sadhana very strictly mm, like we discussed yesterday introspect as much as possible keep correcting yourself um you know mm, yesterday must be today must be better than yesterday in terms of devotion so like this right and be attracted vishaya vini vartante nidahara sadehena rasavajam rasopyasya experience that higher taste in krishna consciousness if you are not experiencing that higher taste uh, something wrong then associate with those devotees who are experiencing that higher taste and automatically it will rub off mm. Mm. so it's important that we choose the right association uh, if you think i'm going to be sitting at home and making progress in krishna consciousness that's not going to happen <clears throat> right um, so this absorption is very very important and uh, yeah liberation happens along the side along route okay <clears throat> 37 atho vibhutim mam maya vinastam aishwaryam ashtangam anuprabhruttam priyam bhagavatim vas prihyanti bhadram parasyame teshnuvate tuloke thus because he is completely absorbed in thought of me the devotee does not desire even the highest benediction obtainable in the high upper planetary systems including satyaloka he does not desire the eight material perfections obtained from mystic yoga nor does he desire to be elevated to the kingdom of god note the last point yet even without desiring them the devotee enjoys even in this life all the offered benedictions and so uh, devotee doesn't uh, like any of this he is not desiring Mm, swarga is not desire not even satyaloka no higher planets not desiring ashta siddhi not desiring even elevation to vaikuntha he just wants to simply serve krishna wherever he is even without desiring them devotee enjoys even in this life all the offered benedictions now for a pure devotee krishna will give whatever is required for him and the devotee simply accepts as krishna's mercy that's all whatever comes he is not going behind anything hmm? the vibhuti or opulence is offered by maya are of many varieties the experience of different varieties of material enjoyment even on this planet but one is able to, if one is able to promote himself to higher planets like chandra loka the sun or still higher mahar loka jana loka tapa loka or even ultimately the highest planet which is inhabited by brahma and is called satya loka there are immense possibilities for material enjoyment for example the duration of life of on higher planets is far far greater than on this planet it is said that on the moon the duration of life is such that our 6 months are equal to one day there uh, we cannot even imagine the duration of life on the highest planet satyaloka mm, it is stated in bhagavad gita that brahma's 12 hours are inconceivable even to our math- mathematicians these are all desc- descriptions of the external energy of the lord or maya besides these there are other opulences which the yogis can achieve by their mystic power there also material the devotee does not aspire for all these material pleasures although they are available to him simply by wishing vidhu uh, mangal thakur says mukti and siddhi are standing uh, at the door of a devotee saying please utilize me please engage me in your service and so simply by wishing these uh, devotee can get all these by the grace of the lord devotee can achieve wonderful success simply by willing but a real devotee does not like that a real devotee does not like that right and who are not real devotees they will keep endeavoring to achieve so many uh, benefits material benefits so they are mishra bhaktas but a real devotee meaning a pure devotee he does not like it uh, but uh, if a lord wants he will uh, he can he, he is okay to accept it hmm hmm devotee can achieve wonderful success simply by willing but he will not do so now chaitanya mahaprabhu is taught that one should not desire material opulence or material reputation nor should one try to enjoy material beauty one should simply aspire to be absorbed in the devotion service of the lord nandanam rajanam na sundarim kavitam vai jagadisha kamai ama janmani janmani ishvare jag bahutat bhakti rahaitu ki toi that's all should simply wish desire to be absorbed engaged in devotion service of the lord even if one does not get liberation but has to continue the process of birth and death unlimitedly because a devotee of this caliber even if he is in this material world he has no material consciousness so he doesn't really suffer 
or enjoy anything connected to this material world. So it doesn't matter for him where he is, whether he is hell or heaven or earth or wherever or in Vaikuntha, in Goloka, he is engaged in his service. Actually, however, to one who engages in Krishna consciousness, liberation is already guaranteed. Devotees enjoy all the benefits of the higher planets and Vaikuntha planets also. Hmm? Is especially mentioned here, Bhagavata, Bhagavatim, Bhadram. In the Vaikuntha planets, everything is eternally peaceful. Yet a few devotees does not even aspire to be promoted there. But still, he gets that advantage. He enjoys all the facilities of the material and spiritual worlds, even during the present lifespan. He enjoys meaning he's he is not like enjoying, enjoying. As in, he is because he is just completely absorbed in Krishna consciousness. He is anyway happy. Because all the time he is in Krishna consciousness. So whether he is in the material world, spiritual world, people are trying to achieve all this for what? For getting happiness. That happiness devotee is already getting. Liberation is anyway already guaranteed like we discussed. Uh, so devotees enjoy all the benefits. Uh, if the Lord gives him opulence like Pundarika Vidyanidhi, he will use it, engage it in Krishna service. Mm. He, uh, yeah, I mean, various devotees had various opulences, right? Like knowledge. Mm, our, all our acharyas are so knowledgeable. They used all of it in Krishna service. Mm. Uh, so everything, they'll just use everything in Krishna service. And whatever Krishna gives, they're happy with whatever is given to them. Uh, they are not wanting anything more. Nor are they wanting to give up what Krishna has given, Yukta Vairagya, and then complete just absorption in Krishna consciousness. And they enjoy whatever is there given to them. They don't like, they don't crib. Nakarhichin mat para shantarupe nankshanti no me ni misho ledhil hetihi yesham aham priya atma tutascha. Sakha Guru Surudo Daivamishtam. The Lord continued, My dear mother, devotees who receive such transcendental opulences are never bereft of them. Neither weapons nor the change of time can destroy such opulences. Because the devotees accept me as their friend, their relative, their son, preceptor, benefactor, and the supreme deity, they cannot be deprived of their positions at any time. So, whatever transcendental opulences, bhakti that a devotee gets, he never loses it. And this we know. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that one may elevate himself to the higher planet systems even up to Brahma Loka by dint of pious activities. But when the effects of such pious activities are finished, one again comes back to this earth to begin a new life of activities. Thus, even though one is promoted to the higher planetary system for enjoyment and a long duration of life, still that is not a permanent settlement. But as far as devotees are concerned, their assets, the achievement of devotional service, in consequent opulence of Vaikuntha, even on this planet, are never destroyed. In this verse, Kapil Dev addresses his mother as Shanta Rupa, indicating that the opulences of the devotees are fixed because the devotees are eternally fixed in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, which is called Shanta Rupa, because it is in the mode of goodness, pure goodness, undisturbed by the modes of passion and ignorance. And so the opulence of the opulences of the devotees are fixed, <coughs> meaning they don't lose anything because they are eternally fixed. Uh, what is the real opulence of a devotee is to be able to remember Krishna all the time and engage in his service. And that is the real opulence. Uh, that is the achievement of devotional service. Uh, it is to be always manmana abadamam bhavamad bhakto madhyaji mamavaskuru. Always being absorbed in Krishna and um, engaging in his service. And this is uh, not lost to the devotee. Devotee doesn't lose this. Um, um, uh, so, and this, uh, and because devotees are eternally fixed in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, which is absorption in Krishna, and which is Shantarupa, it is the pure mode of pure goodness. So, this absorption in Krishna is possible only when we are uh, at least in the mode of goodness. Mm, then we can transcend and go to pure goodness. But if we are in passion and ignorance, we cannot, we will just be disturbed. Mm, if we are, if we, if our life is so designed uh, that it is full of passion and ignorance, uh, influenced heavily by passion and ignorance, mm, then we can't hope to come to goodness 
our life should be so designed that at least we sh we can we should externally live a life of goodness externally meaning know this passion ignorance business mm. then we can transcend that goodness and come to pure goodness mm. but our problem is uh, and the process of bhakti is such that actually uh, you know tado tada raja rajo tamo bhavas kama lo bhayas taye ye cheta ethe rana vidham Mm, what is that? Mm. I forgot. Mm, so it's basically saying that this uh, Rajas and Tamas will go away when we come to this Nishta. This Rajas and Tamas will go away. And Rajas and Tamas has to go away. Right? If you are if you're stuck in Rajas and Tamas, then um, we can't really transcend them. We can't transcend. I mean, we can't reach pure goodness. So life has to be lived in goodness. Then we can go to pure goodness. Hmm. So, uh, like yesterday you were saying, whatever activities of our of day our day to day activities which bring our consciousness down to passion and ignorance should be avoided. Uh, till we can avoid those activities which bring us down to passion and ignorance, we cannot remain in goodness. Because, see, our the beauty of our position is because we are engaged in devotional service. Actually, when we are engaged in devotional service, ideally we should be in pure goodness. Meaning we should, if we are absorbed in Krishna consciousness, then we are not in the modes. Hmm? Or even if we are engaging in devotional activities, for the time that we are engaged in devotional activities, we are protected from the lower modes to a great extent. And um, if we can, uh, but what happens is for the rest of the day, if you're engaged in two hours, three hours, bhakti, rest of the day, we are engaged in activities. Now, with those activities, that association, etc., is very uh, full of passion and ignorance, then the whatever three hours, etc., sadhana we did, will get watered down. And so, we are, we are, so uh, sadhana, we are raising our consciousness. The rest of the day, we are bringing down the consciousness. So it just goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. So we don't really make progress. And if that uh, if that material consciousness worsens, becomes even more deeper in passion and ignorance, then we will go little up, we will go a lot more down. That means in even we won't even remain stable. We will just degrade. We will fall down. So, this life of passion and ignorance has to be avoided, which we are somehow not able to understand. Um, we're not able to appreciate this part. Uh, you know, and when we talk about Varnashrama, this is the idea. The idea of Varnashrama is to live, enable life of goodness. Mm -hmm. um, so, somehow we have to Anukulis, Sankalpa Pratikulis, Avarjanam. Mm, we should try to engage. Uh, in our work, but it should not be too passionate, too much into ignorance. Mm, then it will become very difficult. Once one is fixed in devotional service of the Lord, his position of transcendental service cannot be destroyed. And the pleasure and service simply increase unlimitedly. The devotees engage in Krishna consciousness in the Vaikuntha atmosphere. There is no influence of time. There is no influence of time. In the material world, the influence of time destroys everything. But in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, there is no influence of time or of the demigods because there are no demigods in the Vaikuntha planets. Here, our activities are controlled by different demigods. Even if we move our hand and leg, the action is controlled by the demigods. But in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, there is no influence of the demigods or of time. Not in Vaikuntha. In Vaikuntha atmosphere. Therefore, there is no question of destruction. Hmm. So, one who is engaged in Krishna consciousness in the Vaikuntha atmosphere, and time has no influence. Demigods have no influence. So, <clears throat> there is no question of destruction. When the time element is present, there is certainty of destruction. But when there is no time element, past, present or future, everything is eternal. It doesn't mean that yesterday is not there, today is not there, tomorrow is not there. It means the destructive aspect of time doesn't exist. And because we are Atma, we remain eternal. Uh, and we are anyway eternal. And because we are doing bhakti, our activities also will remain eternal. Mm. Our senses will also get purified, become spiritualized. They will also remain eternal. So everything becomes eternal. 
therefore this verse uses the words na nankshanti indicating that the transcendental opulences will never be destroyed hmm. so basically but the important thing here is that we have to be engaged in krishna consciousness in the vaikuntha atmosphere hmm. and vaikuntha atmosphere also means no uh, envy uh, you know no back biting uh, you know putinati no diplomacy all these things as well hmm. Mm. and of course no passion no ignorance and so if you are in this vaikuntha atmosphere then there is no influence of time mm. so pure devotees who are in the vaikuntha vaikuntha atmosphere so for them uh, uh, giving up this body is just like one event when they are ready to go back to krishna krishna will just take away their body uh, and like bhagavatam in connection with narada muni's life says that is like just like thunder and lightning together that's all uh, right meaning um, material body goes off uh, gross body is given up uh, devotee has already developed his spiritual body uh, with the spiritual body just goes to vaikuntha that's all no death no nothing <laughs> the reason for freedom from destruction is also described the devotee accept the supreme lord as the most dear personality and reciprocate with him in different relationships they accept the supreme person god as the dear most friend dear most relative dear most son dear most preceptor dear most well wisher or the dear most deity the lord is eternal therefore any relationship in which we accept him is also eternal it is clearly confirmed here in that the relations cannot be destroyed therefore the opulences of those relationships are never destroyed what are the opulences of the relationships right like uh, the uh, service a devotee does in that relationship to the lord the, the happiness the lord feels uh, and the resulting progress that the devotee achieves resulting closeness that he achieves to krishna all those are the opulences and they are never destroyed every living entity has the propensity to love someone we can see that if someone has no object of love he generally directs his love to a pet animal like a cat or a dog thus the eternal propensity for love in all living entities is always searching for a place to reside eternal propensity for love place to reside meaning whom where do i repose where do i uh, place this love who is the object of love everybody is searching for this from this verse we can learn we can love the supreme person of god as our dear most object as a friend son preceptor preceptor well wisher and there will be no cheating and no end to such love we shall eternally enjoy the relationship with the supreme lord in different aspects a special feature of this verse is the acceptance of the supreme lord as a supreme preceptor bhagavad gita was spoken directly by the supreme lord and arjuna accepted krishna as guru or spiritual master similarly we should accept only krishna as a supreme spiritual master and follow whatever he is saying in bhagavad gita krishna of course means krishna and his confidential devotees krishna is not alone when you speak of krishna krishna means krishna in his name form qualities abode associates krishna is never alone for the devotees krishna are not impersonalists for the devotees of krishna are not impersonalists for example a king is always associated with his secretary commander servant so much paraphernalia as soon as we accept krishna and his associates as our preceptors no ill effects can destroy our knowledge but important thing this is that we have to accept them as preceptors not namesake accept them as preceptors meaning that accept them as our gurus learn from them hear from them learn from them uh, otherwise no point uh, uh, then no ill effects can destroy our knowledge uh, then whatever happens in our life whatever ill effects uh, result of past karma etc etc it cannot destroy our knowledge hmm? about our relationship with krishna about our relationship with guru etc in the material world the knowledge which we acquire might change because of the influence of time but nevertheless the conclusions received from bhagavad gita directly from the speeches of the supreme lord krishna can never change uh, material world knowledge changes now right? pluto was a planet now it's no longer a planet uh, but conclusions received from bhagavad gita they know they, they don't change because it is directly spoken by krishna there is no use interpreting bhagavad gita it is eternal krishna the supreme lord should be accepted as one's best friend he will never cheat he will always give his friendly advice and friendly protection to the devotee so nice moktaram agna tapasam sarvalokamaheshwaram surudam 
so one who has accepted supreme lord as everything he was not he might not have achieved perfection yet right but he has accepted krishna as everything sarvasva for him there is no influence of time but we should have literally accepted krishna as sarvasva not just lip service hmm. um yeah so for a devotee there is no death there is no suffering also like i said you know everything is just krishna's mercy that's all whatever suffering we are going through is just krishna's mercy why um, because it's just going to make us closer to krishna dearer to krishna that's all and so no suffering uh, no death hmm? no old age etc just happen externally because um, you know just to bewilder the atheist uh, devotees go through what is known as called as old age but actually even in old age the characteristics of old age don't manifest right like 70 years propad was working you know at his speed and um, amount of effort he was putting you know maybe he was doing 10 20 people's work right so even for devotees old age doesn't necessarily at come with the other aspects of old age just that they age maybe their hair will turn white uh you know they might develop some wrinkles in their face or whatever right i mean just indications of aging but um that is just to otherwise people will go crazy looking at devotees if they remain like ever youthful uh, everybody will want to take up bhakti just to remain ever youthful right so krishna doesn't want such misuse of bhakti so he doesn't he doesn't uh, doesn't uh, uh man you know such kind of um effect of bhakti doesn't manifest because then people just use it for misuse it uh, so yeah so devotees go through uh, normal like uh, aging process etc but their mood their spirit uh, is just more and more at, you know absorbed in krishna so there's no influence of time basically that's the whole point there's no influence of time uh, so none of the opulences transcendental opulences that a devotee has Uh, god uh, nothing gets destroyed because there's no influence of time at all mm. okay so i think i'll stop here for today
Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, uh, what exactly do you mean by no influence of time, Prabhu? Because we are, we all come under time, no? time period, or it's only when you go back to Godhead, there's no influence of time. No, there's no influence of time. The influence of time means destruction. Mm, meaning, like, you see, karma, like, Kala destroys everything, right? Like, for example, for a material person, for a normal human being who's not a devotee, a devotee has to, you know, whatever. Even a devotee is under, even like, even we come under the influence of that time. No, no, we'll we, age, we'll we dwindle, have... we'll die un until we go back, back to Godhead. <laughs> no, no, no. So what we have to yeah, understand is, form. no, what we have to understand is that we, at this point of time, we might be under the influence of time. I'm saying we might be because it's the internal state of a devotee, right? Uh, if a devotee is completely surrendered to Krishna, he's not under the influence of time. Okay. Whatever is happening around us is a semblance of time. It just looks like time is having an impact, but actually it's not time. It's Krishna. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discussed this also when the devotee, a pure devotee, the pure devotee senses are all spiritualized. Uh, so actually by the time time comes for him to actually give up his body, that is just an external act. Uh, again, like I said, you know, if, uh, if everybody like just um, like Dhruva Maharaj, Mm, right, one fine day, all healthy, and suddenly they vanish without even leaving their material body behind. Uh, world will go crazy, mm, right? Actually, but devotees can do that. They can just, with their same material body, they can go to Goloka, um, right? Because the, the whole body is actually spiritualized, but externally it just looks like a normal material body. Uh, you know, there is uh, some sense of pleasure and pain, etc. Um, externally, mm, so when the devotee's body is completely spiritualized. Actually, he doesn't have any experience, any pleasure and pains of this material world. Uh, so he's not under the influence of time, right? Karma phala ends. So where is the influence of time? Hmm? Karma phala ends, like I said, right? At the time of Nishta, uh, devotees, uh, karma phala ends. So which means that no more influence of time. No more karma, no more phala, right? Uh, aging, like I said, is just an external process because otherwise uh, the world will misuse bhakti. So Krishna just manifest some aspects of aging in a devotee so that it looks like, okay, he's growing old. But actually, we see all those, all over, in, even in his country, all the, you know, great devotees, you know, you, you can't make out that they're so old. Uh, you know, they'll say, oh, okay, like, uh, uh, you know, 70th birthday, 80th birthday, etc. Like yesterday, we were seeing Janivas Prabhu, uh, right? Like, uh, so we can't make out at all that they are like really so aged or anything like that. Um, because there's really no influence of time on them. Right? They will remain as fresh, as energetic, as young. Um, but then, yeah, because they have to go away from this material. Well, like yesterday, there was one more video about Prabhupada dictating purport to 10th canto, 13th chapter, right? On his, on, when he's about to leave his body. Mm, right? So this is where, they, where is the influence of time? Uh, there's no influence of time. Right? But... Uh, Provided at least we have to come till Nishta. We have to come till Nishta. Till we come to Nishta, we are having influence of time. We are having karma, karma phala. We are having all this. right? But after we come to Nishta, there is no question of time. That means only when you are sp completely spiritualized, there is no, no influence no. of time. Nishta, Nishta, Nishta. is not. Okay, Nishta 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 is not then what about Bharat Maharaj Prabhuji? Why, no, no, why he second. had influence of time? No, he didn't have it. One second. So, first thing is Nishta is not a purely... Uh, it's not a platform of love, but it's a transcendental platform. Mm -hmm. Nishta mm -hmm. is a stage where we are Brahma Bhuta, meaning we are not affected by things around us, even okay. if there is pleasure or pain. right? Mm -hmm. And when a devotee is actually on that stage, the karma phala ends. Mm -hmm. All karma phala ends. Right? No, after that, we still have our free will. There is no influence of karma. Right, but we can still we still have our free will. We can use or misuse our free will. That is what Bharat Maharaj did, right? He misused this free will, right? So that is the reason why his uh, episode is given and said, "Don't ever go away from the association of devotees," right? Because it was not because of his karma phala that he is, uh, you know, got attached. He just wanted to become attached, so he became attached. <laughs> So we should understand these technicalities. See, that is why I've been like from yesterday harping on this Nishta. Please understand this Nishta is a very, very critical juncture stage in our Bhakti. Hmm? 
once we cover past that we are transcendental then when we reach that stage we are not we don't belong to this material world but we'll still be here we'll be eating we'll be sleeping you know whatever right normal activities will go on but we are transcendental you're not on the material platform everything happens just as a habit okay eating is happening because yeah body has to be maintained so eating happens but in eating uh, yeah, a person in brahma bhuta is not like over oh, jumping up and down saying that you know i got my favorite food he's just saying okay this is good this is good enough for me because this gives me nourishment mm, this gives my help to keep my body and soul together that's all so everything that a devotee does in nishta is just on the brahma bhuta platform he's not trying to enjoy his senses his whole focus is simply to please krishna and this is not is... this is not a very exalted state please understand this will come immediately after anartha nivritti as soon as the devotee gets over all his anarthas he will he'll come to brahma bhuta he will come to nishta hmm. so if we simply engage in serious bhakti the first effect immediate effect of bhakti is anartha nivritti right and when that anartha nivritti almost is complete we immediately go into nishta and that stage of nishta is liberated state mukti stage of mukti stage where we actually enter the transcendental platform completely and this is not something for only some great devotees this is a stage every devotee has to achieve it's a mandatory like like i said it's just a springboard or uh, you know like a a uh, basic stage from where pure devotion actually starts where krishna actually starts accepting our uh, devotional offerings mm. Mm. because we enter into immediately we enter into ruchi and we have attraction for krishna in attraction keeps increasing etc etc mm. so nishta beyond nishta there is no influence of time on us Pranam Prabhu ji, uh, just uh, one thing I wanted to uh, learn, like, can we understand in this way, like, the influence of uh, time is not acting on devotees, like pure devotees, in a way that uh, they understand the whole scenario, how the time is going on, like, the mm. eternal no. thing? No, it's not knowledge. Okay. It's not on the platform of knowledge. Okay. Okay. It's a reality. Like, time will okay. not have influence. See, I mean, see, karma, one of the aspects of time is destruction. and what is in like that's what we disc just discussed right none of his transcendental opulences will get destroyed hmm? he is not under the influence of kala which is the most important destructive element in this material world the only thing that happens to him is incidental aging that is just because you know just to like i said right vishnu chakravarti thakur says like otherwise people will use misuse bhakti so krishna will just manifest some of these external things so that you know it just looks like normal oh okay is a normal person is aging is dying like that right but internally the devotee is already in the transcendental platform his senses are getting spiritualized so he has nothing to do with material world at all yes prabhu ji that's why the devotee will feel like how long i am in this world so no no he will not feel he will not feel about the, he is he has no time to feel about anything about this material world he is simply absorbed in krishna consciousness he is happy that he is able to serve krishna he is absorbed in thinking about krishna he doesn't matter he doesn't care whether he is in material yes, world even he health. doesn't care about his life like how long he yeah. lives he is not bothered with such yeah, things he is not bothered at all i mean and it's reality it's not just he is not a theoretical it's not knowledge this is also like uh, he is uh, not influenced by time this understanding that a devotee feels like for example say a devotee is like 30 35 years old 40 years say he he'll start feeling that how long i am here more in this world so he'll not bothered he'll not be bothered with material things all disturbances all turbulences will going will be there in his life but he'll be like me ko to jana hi hai idhar se nahi, 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 nahi. no that, no this this i want to go away from here is running away we are just wanting to running away run away from our suffering that's why we are saying okay i'm no, here no, for so long like ki we are not bothered ki main idhar kitni der hu why should i waste my time in such petty things aisa understand me no, i mean i i no i'm not able to understand because it's still coming from the undertone of the statement is still material a devotee a pure devotee in that stage has he's not even thinking about on these lines 
is not thinking saying that i'm on, i mean i mean this world for so many years or how long i am going to be i mean these are not this these are not material. considerations at all for him i mean this is a okay. this is a purely material consideration how how long have i been here in this material world means it's referring to the body it's purely material a crude devotee has no interest thinking about his material body on the in the stage of nishta the devotee is just free from all anarthas and he, whatever comes right even if there is something like a suffering you know he just doesn't bother right even if there is happiness material happiness he doesn't bother he is just simply absorbed in krishna how to serve krishna how to preach how to do this how to please guru that's all his focus yes sir right so he is he has no he is no interest or he's he doesn't have to think about anything about this body about his life whether he's in grahast ashram or in sanyas ashram he's somewhere else you know nothing he's nothing he he's doesn't absorbed he is so much absorbed that's why time is not influencing like he is not feeling the influence of time <laughs> no <laughs> again i am trying to this, yeah okay. again i am trying to tell first of all influence of time stops and right why we are not able to accept this influence of time stops influence of time is destruction it's karma phala material happiness material distress all this is influence of time time just comes to a standstill it can't destroy anything that the devotee ha- achieves has right krishna is anyway saying right um, yoga kshemam vahamyam nothing now can touch the devotee it's his own free will that can destroy him that's all but we are in in a pure devotee's life after that's what i'm saying i'm very being very very specific after nishta there is no karma phala so if when if a devotee is suffering it's just krishna's mercy now we can many many times in the past people have asked this question i was not technically un, uh, sure about this myself but after recent studies i am very clear that the any suffering which happens in the life of a devotee before nishta is karma mostly 99% okay the very rare chance that it is special mercy but otherwise mostly it's karma after nishta whatever happens suffering in the devotee's life is purely krishna's will but for a guru an additional consideration is unqualified disciples right so these are two things potential right or the other thing is vaishnava prapara hmm. for suffering post nishta but karma none of this is under the influence of karma this is all krishna directly <clears throat> okay yes prabhu ji yes okay yes, just sir. you So, yeah, Prabhuji, one sec. One, so, uh, so one, one, so, sorry, Prabhu. One, one minute. When you say for a guru, it is disciples just saying. But when he is above Nishta and he is above the influence of time, then why should somebody yeah, yeah, X Y Z? Yeah, why very, did very somebody... important question. Why very important question? Very significant question. This is yesterday. I I told the answer to this right. Um, a, a, a guru. This is what Shastra is saying. Yeah, right. A guru has to accept only qualified disciples. and is responsible for them living a non sinful life by giving them training this is uh, this is expectation out of a guru right now even if a guru is giving training if disciples are unqualified and they don't want to take the training and there is they live sinful they do sin, sinful activities the effect is directly experienced by the guru so this is the responsibility that a guru is taking that is the reason why many devotees run away from uh, you know wanting to accept guru ship because it's not easy right it's for example guru might be saying yes you do this do this do this do this when your devotee is not for disciple is not following he becomes responsible for it the guru becomes responsible for it this is the unfortunate thing right Uh, that if disciples are not sincere that is the reason why shastra says qualified devotee disciples only qualified people should be given uh, you know should be accepted disciples what is their qualification sincere serious surrendered willing to accept whatever guru says if this qualification is not there uh, guru should not initiate right because otherwise what happens uh, simple uh, side effect is just guru is affected by all this 
Ya, yo te mando allí. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Ah, okay. Shuti Mataji Vamshi Prabhu. I have to do a slash. <laughs> okay, one of you will speak, yeah. So, so uh, again on the influence of time, Prabhu. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you said it is there is no influence of time on a pure, pure devotee. Prabhupada said. And, uh, for, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, non-pure devotee or for atheist, there is an influence of time. Right. No, so we can no 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 no. Let me just clarify that. For a atheist, there is influence of time. For a non devotee, okay. there's influence of time. For a mixed okay. devotee, also there's an influence of time. For a pure hmm. devotee who has reached nishta and beyond, there's no influence of time. Okay, okay. So if I have understood it right, uh, in the material context, if I see that we leave a body and we move ahead in the journey to next life in some capacity. Mm -hmm. any of the category people uh, whom you mentioned right now mm -hmm. so for all others technically probably i'm thinking that it will be a reset for everyone except for pure devotee and pure devotee will continue from where they have stopped in this present life is my understanding correct prabhu if no. i if i have to uh, no. like you know say influence of time is not there on pure devotee no no pure devotee influence of time is not there meaning that he actually doesn't die the way we think of death, death means giving up this body, taking up another material body. That doesn't happen for a pure devotee. So he doesn't die. He just gives up this body before he enters the spiritual plane. That's all. I mean, before he goes to Vaikuntha, he gives up this material body because he has to give up this material body because this material body externally is made up of uh, Pancha Mahabhuta. So he has to give up, he will give up. But if he already his spiritual body is formed, so he will just uh, accept his spiritual body, go to wherever his destination is. Okay, so in that case, technically pure devotee will just shift their body from material body to spiritual body in this life, and then they they are already move internally they are already their body is spiritualized, meaning the senses have become spiritualized, which are not visible. But externally, there is still a covering of the material covering is there, which has to be given up. Right? So, which is a normal process of death. Like I said, devotee doesn't actually have to go through this process of giving up his gross body. Subtle body is already spiritualized. So, there's no material mind, there's no material intelligence, there's no material false ego. Right? So, it's already subtle body is already spiritualized. Gross body is also spiritualized, but externally, uh, he, he will have to give up his gross body just to confirm with the uh, world around him, right? Meaning, oh yeah, people take birth, they grow, uh, they then, you know, become aged and they die. Hmm? Dhru Maharaj did not go through this. Dhru Maharaj, at the time of perfection, he just in the self-same body, he climbed a Vaikuntha plane. All pure devotees can do this. Just that Krishna doesn't want this to happen so frequently because then people will say, oh, wonderful. You know, or they'll go crazy saying that, you know, these devotees are crazy. They are doing some crazy stuff. You know, they're just going underground and then they're saying they they just vanished into thin air, whatever, right? I mean, people around will start going crazy and they'll speculate so many things about pure devotees. So Krishna doesn't want all this, right? He wants, his, he wants to create a, provide an atmosphere, conducive atmosphere for devotees to do bhakti. So, externally, he will just make it look like just what normal people understand death is, which is to just give up this body and blah, blah, blah. But uh, actually, it's just, they just give up that body. They already have their spiritual body. They'll, uh, they'll accept spiritual body and then they'll just go to wherever their destination is. Prabhuji, <laughs> regarding Guru Maharaj, you're talking. After he, after he got uh, realization, but when he was crowned, he took revenge of his brother's death. Correct, he killed correct. so many things. Correct. So much of material. Uh, he lived such a materialistic life. And, uh, no, no, also, we should not say materialistic I... life. He did one mistake that is highlighted in Bhagavatam. For yeah. the simple reason that devotees have to be careful. Right? He became he became little attached to his brother. Right? He became little too much attached to his brother. And it's just showing that, you know, it should not be like that. But when, you know, Kubera comes, all other, you know, Manu comes, everybody comes, they're all saying, you are a devotee, why, you know, you're like, it's just one stage where 
you know, we've, we've achieved something, but, you know, we've not achieved full perfection, right? So there are, there might be still some anarthas left, which will just come up once in a while. Mm -hmm. So it, this was just one such incident for Dhruva Maharaj, but that's not significant. It's just one incident. It's just that in Bhagavatam, because like pages are written about it, we think that it's some big, long incident. No, it's just one incident. In 36,000 years, only one possible, uh, you know, so-called uh, fall down or mistake that Dhruva did, right? And but then that actually created more. Uh, it it influenced him. It had more impact on him to so that he could actually re-engage himself completely in devotion and achieve perfection, right? So killing so many snakes was not a small mistake, right? No, no. So he is a king. He was a king. No, no. Let's not. We are we are not in his position, right? He was a king, okay. right? Okay. He could have he I, and he has the spirit of a kshatriya. Right. right. Uh, he there was something wrong done by somebody killing his brother. Right. He <coughs> could have taken a. He could have. He could have solved for it in a different way. But because okay. he was he got carried away by being a kshatriya. He got uh -huh. carried away by that mo emotion of his of losing his brother. That he killed more than required. That's what actually uh, Manu comes and says. Right. That you killed more ekshas than required for the you know loss of one brother. Yeah. Right. So at momentarily, it's like Arjuna, you know, becoming bewildered, right? So for momentarily, Dhruva became bewildered by that situation just to teach us, right? Now, and it was just one battle. I mean, it was not like some, uh, you know, some like it was, it didn't go on for years, right? It was just one single battle, uh, which is very common for Akshatriya. Just that on Dharmic principles, he could have avoided it and maybe found a different way of solving for it, right? But it is that, you know, when one gets into a battle, that sequence of actions is very difficult to control, right? So he got into one such event and then, but immediately he came out, you know, at the end of it, when Manu comes and says, stop it, he just stops it. Kubera comes and says, amazing. You know, your ability to just give up anger is just outstanding. This is the quality of a devotee, not that he fought, right? So mistakes can happen. That's why Krishna is saying, Atpi Chetsu Duracharo, Sadhu Rehavai Mantavya. Devotees can end up, you know, sometimes some crazy things can happen. Mm, that is because our uh, uh, anarthas coming from Nama Parada will continue till Bhava. But anyway, so the, the important point, we should not get uh, deviated from the discussion, is that he was a, he, he, uh, he continued his sadhana, he became a pure devotee, he left his, uh, he left this world in his self-same body. Right, and so we can also do that, but yeah. Krishna chooses that we leave our body behind uh, just to create retain more sanity in the environment around us, and hence, pure devotees just leave their body and go. That's all. So, so Hare Krishna Prabhu, you know, just uh, so when we are when we are said that the devotees, is, even if he commits an abominable uh, sin, yeah. he's still yeah. better placed. That means it gives us also a chance that if we have broken something or we've fallen down, we can still pull us up and become yeah, a good devotee absolutely, with seriousness. Ab absolutely. With seriousness. Absolutely. This example, this yes. example can be quoted. Yes, absolutely. And Prabhupada right. also says that, but one should not make use of this and ah. sin on the <laughs> strength of the holy name. But if <laughs> suppose say we have yes. fallen, we have fallen, yeah. we should obviously understand saying that yes, you know, you can see this and that and Dhruva Maharaj achieved that perfection, right? Achieved perfection such that he could just go back to Vaikuntha in his self-same body, right? Even though he did such a, you know, yeah, seemingly gross mistake, right? So, Bhakti is super powerful. It can pull us from any stage, any mood, any situation in our life. Just that we have to take complete surrender. We have to completely surrender to Bhakti and pure devotees and then they can pull us out from whatever situation we are in. Absolutely. One more thing, sorry, Prabhu. What there's a difference between the paradharma and Krishna consciousness, Prabhu? Like no, or, it's the same no, thing. Same thing. Yeah. So when we are we are, we are into it, it is aparadharma till we come to nishta to a stage of nishta. Not necessarily. Even somebody Anything. who is in even somebody who is who is not in nishta, <coughs> who is anartha nivruti, he could have completely surrendered to Krishna and giving up and given up his uh, you know material responsibilities. Krishna is saying in first canto, like, even if suppose a devotee is prematurely, immaturely surrendered to Krishna, no problem, right? No issues, right? But after Nishta is when 
the complete influence of uh, karma phala will go off right but anybody can give up their apara dharma at any stage there is no restriction but it has it should not be done whimsically but krishna is saying even if done whimsically and then he falls down no problem krishna is encouraging full surrender prabhupada says in that purport actually he says in spite of possible uh, chances of falling down devotee should still surrender fully to krishna yes prabhu ji thank you yeah sorry okay. are you okay thank you very much again for one <laughs> lively discussion <laughs> भागवतम की जय जगत गुरु श्री रप्रपात की जय माता कल्पत हरे कृष्ण प्रभा जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभा जी धन्यवाद